Hi there, thanks for checking out the very first uh, video mini lecture screencast for the honors pre calc class at Harrison High School. And the goal of this video is to introduce you to some of the basics of trigonometry. About half of our study of pre calculus this year will be built on trigonometry. And trigonometry starts in talking about angles. Now, you studied angles in geometry, uh, and I drew an angle for you here in red, uh, but you'll notice that I fixated the XY, the rectangular axes on top of this angle, right at the vertex. The vertex of the angle is also where the origin of the XY, um, where, where the rectangular um, axes intersect. And this angle is in what we call standard position. This is a standard position angle. And the reason I know that it's a standard position angle is because one of the sides is right on the positive x-axis. And in fact, we've got a name for that side, the side that's along the positive x-axis is called the initial side of the angle. These are all terms that we must have some understanding about before we can fluently and functionally talk trigonometry. We call this side the initial side. This here is, I'm not going to mark it, but it's called the vertex. That's really nothing new regarding angles. Uh, we call this side then the other side, the side that's not necessarily along the positive x-axis. That's called the terminal side. You know, initial is a word that kind of means first, and terminal is a side that kind of means final. So here's my first side, here's my final side. I've always thought about angles being like this. Imagine I take this red ray here, the initial side, and then pick it up and rotate it with a fixed point right on the vertex. I pick up that ray and move it by some displacement and then drop it down somewhere. That's kind of my thinking about angles. It's really important to clearly define how we measure angles in trigonometry. We will, we will use degrees sometimes, and that's something that you're probably used to from your study of geometry. More often than degrees, we will use a different measurement that we call radians. Radians. That's the one that we will use more often than we will use degrees in trigonometry. The radian system is set up so that one whole revolution, one whole uh, 360 degree movement you might say, is the same as 2 pi radians, about 6.28 radians. This RAD is an abbreviation that's accepted for radians. Oftentimes you'll see that completely left off. Uh, if there is no measurement given, in other words, if you're not told that we're measuring in degrees, you're to assume that we're talking about radians. So it's probably worth our time to take a second here and decide um, maybe at all four of these locations here along one of the axes, what the angle measurement would be so that the terminal side would be along that axis. I guess it's a, it's a basic thing to say, but if I were to pick up the initial side here and then drop it back down where it had been, I guess I've moved it by like no angle whatsoever. That would be zero radians. Let's mark that here. That's a zero. And you know, if I were to move the whole thing, if I were to pick up this ray and move it one whole revolution, it would also land in that same spot too. So I'm going to also write 2 pi there, just to say that's another angle, another rotation that would end up here. Now I guess it's pretty reasonable to say that if 2 pi radians would take me all the way around one revolution, I think that pi radians, half of that, would be like over here at about 180 degrees or so. 
So I think the angle pi would have a terminal side that runs along the negative x-axis. And I can kind of use that thinking again. I could say, well, half of pi, half of this revolution pi, would end me up here in the direction of the positive y-axis. That would be like half of pi, which we're going to write like pi over 2. And I guess I've, I've yet to mark this one down here. Um, it's like halfway between pi and 2 pi. It would be like 1 and a half pi, and we'll write that like 3 pi over 2. The fraction 3 halves means the same thing as 1 and a half. You know, it's probably also important here to make something very clear, which is that a positive angle will be moving in the counterclockwise direction. In other words, if I give you a positive angle, I'm going to think of taking this initial side and rotating it in the counterclockwise direction until I get to the appropriate place to drop it. If I give you a negative angle, yes folks, we're going to talk about negative angles in pre-calc, then we're actually talking about a clockwise rotation. So for example, another name for this angle down, or excuse me, another angle that would land in the same place that 3 pi over 2 would land would be where if I were to go one quarter of a whole revolution in the negative direction, starting here and rotating until we get here. So another one that works for down here would be negative pi over 2. I could go the same uh, measure of the angle that was positive pi over 2 from here to here only in the negative direction. One of our goals for the next class meeting is given some angle and I've listed three of them here, given some angle determine in which quadrant it's located. Uh, if you recall from algebra class we, we number the quadrants, this is quadrant 1 where both x and y are positive this is quadrant 2, where y is positive but x is negative. This is quadrant 3 down here, where both x and y are negative. And quadrant 4 is down here, where we have a positive x but a negative y. So, I want to see if we can kind of estimate not just which, excuse me, not just which quadrant these three angles are in, but also maybe just kind of sketch where they're at. Now 2 pi over 3 I've already drawn for you is the one that I tried to sketch at the beginning of our video today. The reason I think that's where 2 pi over 3 is, and I've got a couple reasons why. The first one is that if I kind of ignore the pi, if I just look at 2 thirds, 2 thirds is more than a half, so in other words it would be a bigger angle than just to the positive x-axis but two-thirds is certainly less than one which is kind of the hidden coefficient in front of pi here. So I, using that information I kind of know that I'm looking for an angle that goes beyond where pi over two would land but stops before where pi would land. That's why I kind of think that this angle here, this angle here, two pi over three, belongs in quadrant two. Now I'll use the same kind of thinking to work with pi over 6. Pi over 6 is the same as a sixth, a sixth of a pi. And pi, we said, was starting at the initial side, going half of a revolution. So if I thought of breaking this half of a revolution, you know, I do know that that's 180 degrees. If I thought of breaking this half a revolution into six equal pieces, this would be about a sixth of one of those pies, about something like 30 degrees. So maybe that's what pi over 6 looks like. Rotate from here to there, and there's the angle. And what about 7 pi over 4? I guess I want to figure out maybe where 7 fourths would lie in terms of some of these other um, angles along the axes. Well, 7 fourths, if I ignore pi for a second, 7 fourths is certainly more than 1, 
which would be here. So I know we're talking about something bigger than 180 degrees or bigger than half of a revolution. 7 fourths is even bigger than 3 halves. 3 halves would be the same as 6 fourths. We're talking about 7 fourths. So what I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to take an angle that rotates positive direction all the way around past pi, past one and a half pi, and ends here about a quarter of a pi shy of two pi. That seven fourths would look kind of like this. And if I were to actually draw the rotation, I would start here and say it ends right there. So here's where seven pi over four would be. It's certainly in quadrant four. Well, let's examine a couple of things using our first angle here, 2 pi over 3. Another thing that you're asked to be ready to talk about next time that we meet is to find angles that are coterminal with another angle. Co usually means together. Terminal is kind of a reference to the terminal side. So what the term coterminal means is that we're looking for angles that have the same terminal side as 2 pi over 3. So here, here are a couple examples of angles that are coterminal with 2 pi over 3. One of them looks like this. It would start with the same initial side, but it would go in the negative direction. And I hope that you can see why that angle would have to be coterminal with 2 pi over 3. It ends in the same place. It might be challenging to figure out what that angle is. Uh, you could do it by saying, okay, well, this angle is 2 pi over 3, and this would have to be everything but one whole revol everything else that makes up one revolution with that. So you could kind of say, well, that's one whole revolution, 2 pi, minus the 2 pi over 3 that we came up with. Uh, 2 pi is the same as 6 pi over 3. So how about four, uh, a negative 4 pi over 3 here? 4 pi over 3 is the value I'm looking for because it would be everything else in that one whole revolution. I need to add the negative sign because the negative sign indicates the sign of that rotation. Now that's not the only one that would work in that uh, in this task of trying to find coterminal angles. I could also, and it's kind of weird to follow, I'll do it in gray here, I could rotate one whole time around, excuse me, I could rotate one whole time around uh, the whole, make one whole revolution, and then I could stop at that same spot. I could pick up this initial side, move it all the way around, one whole revolution, and then stop here. That would be like adding 2 pi to 2 pi over 3. So another angle that's coterminal with 2 pi over 3 would be 2 pi, 6 pi over 3 plus 2 more pi over 3. How about 8 pi over 3? And notice this one's positive because of the direction. You could actually literally come up with infinitely many coterminal angles here. But those are probably the two most common answers you might receive here. The very last thing we need to make sure that we know how to do before the next class meeting is to be able to talk about finding the complement and the supplement of an angle. In geometry we define the complement of an angle as the angle you would add to the given angle so that their sum was 90 degrees. Well, this is a reference to the radians version of that. 90 degrees is like a quarter of a, rev of a revolution. So if I'm looking for the complement of an angle, I'm looking for the angle that you would add to that angle to get not 90 degrees but pi over 2, one quarter of a revolution. And for a supplement, the supplemental uh, supplementary angles in geometry added up to 180 degrees. Here the reference is to pi, pi being half of a revolution, the same as 180 degrees. Uh, these have to be positive angles, by the way. I claim to you that there is no complement to the angle 2 pi over 3 because it's already bigger than 90. The angle that you would add to 2 pi over 3 to make one whole pi would be pi over 3. If you struggle with these ideas, please let me know. Thanks for the efforts, and I'll see you very soon.